So we're on our way right now as we speak. We're gonna go meet with Dr. Lois Lee, the founder of Children of the Night. Now, these people, this group, they actually firsthand rescue children that are being sexually exploited, molested, and raped off the street. So let's just go see what stories that Dr. Lois Lee has to tell. Dr. Lois. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, Millie Weaver with InfoWars. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you for giving us your time. Yeah, definitely. Let's go ahead and sit down and okay. have an interview. Good. Are you comfortable here? Okay. And what you have here is absolutely amazing. Some of the girls gave us a tour, and I was absolutely shocked to see that you're actually doing real things to help get these girls off the street. The children who really suffer from this crime have been left behind in the movement. Uh, children who are prostituting, um, many who love their pimps, um, and many of them are controlled by gangs, um, are prostitutes, and that's how they identify. They do not think that the word trafficking applies to them. The people who are running the trafficking movements um, find the children who are involved in prostitution offensive to them, and they find them difficult to deal with, and they have not set up any kind of programs for them. So you'll see a lot of advocacy, a lot of prevention, uh, a lot of lobbying, a lot of legislation, um, but no real benefit for the child who actually suffers from the victimization of prostitution. So how do you go about rescuing these kids off the street? Well, we have a hotline that's 24-7. I've been doing this for 38 years. I joke about being the most famous person in juvenile halls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you call any hotline and you say that you know there's a child involved in prostitution, they're going to refer them to us. Um, we had one million dollars a year of free advertising, pro bono advertising, on Backpage.com, right next to the escort services. Um, we are really well recognized by law enforcement. We work very closely with law enforcement, um, and so I've been around a long time. I know a lot of people. I know judges. I know you know people who run across these kids. Um, and the kids that we serve are kids who have actually prostituted, and um, many are testifying against pimp traffickers in state and uh, federal cases. And Some of the girls here looked pretty young. What's like the youngest child that you've rescued so far? Eight. Eight? But wow. that was many years ago, and it was a boy whose parents literally dumped him on the streets, left him on a curb. And... Um, but 11 to 17 is what we see, mostly 13, 14, 15. Uh, but we have 11-year-olds. They don't look 11. But, you know, the thing that people fail to, to recognize is there's so much, you know, media around rescuing these children. And then I always like to say the rescues, well, where is she? Well, I don't know. I send them back home. And social services have not done their job. They've, and the police have done their job. Social services have not. They've not provided homes for these children. And, uh, and the homes that they provide for other children are uh, an embarrassment. I saw on your website that um, it talked about how you did a lot of work to get it so that law enforcement started looking at these children as victims instead of criminals. Can you go on and tell us about that? Well, in 1975, I initiated lawsuits against the uh, Los Angeles Police Department and Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department uh, about the unequal enforcement of the prostitution law. And my role was that of a researcher where I, I analyzed their police reports to see who they arrested and under what circumstances uh, they arrested them uh, and found out a lot about that. And um, one of the things I found out is that they used prostitutes as informants. Ninety percent of their informants were prostitutes. So that if a girl would give them information on two guys who'd committed felonies, like a pimp and another drug dealer or something, then she wouldn't go to jail for prostitution. And the prostitution laws in California were very stiff. Your second conviction was a mandatory 60 days in jail. Your third conviction was a mandatory 90 days in jail. Yeah. That is cruel to someone who's also a heroin addict who has to kick in a jail cell. So the girls were more than happy to be informants and to turn in people. So that symbiotic relationship had already existed. And when I found young girls, and not all of them were teenagers, but they were young, um, and they told me what was going on, we had a little sit down with the police and we talked about it. We talked about how could we assure that they had their convictions, their witnesses, and that also these girls were treated with dignity. 
And so the police became very proactive and they were very happy to do it in terms of erasing, you know, their criminal records so that they could get jobs. Um, they let them live with me rather than live in jails. They let me put them in drug programs where they kicked heroin. Uh, rather than actually have to kick in a jail cell. It all started with Los Angeles Police Department in my apartment in 1978. And then word spread pretty quickly through law enforcement, through vice cops, and they started sending me girls. And uh, it was really through the coordination of that. I still am very committed to working with local vice cops rather than bureaucrats. It's a shame because a lot of the detectives have disappeared um, and things have become formalized in terms of these... Uh, uh, human trafficking task forces, which is, you know, has a lot of prestige, which, you know, a lot of cops want to be on those task forces, but it's really removed from the work required to drive around in an old beat up car in alleys and drug dens and street locations where you really find the kids because you have to dig through a lot of garbage in order to find the children. Sure. So do you usually find the children out there actually walking the streets or do you find sure. them usually on the internet? You can find them in truck stops, you can find them walking the streets, you can find them in motels. Um, the, um, there's kids on the internet but not as many as there are adults and kids kind of slip into the internet. Um, and pimps, you know, a place, I mean, a pimp may have a girl who's 30, may have a girl that's 26, 24, one that's 19, and another one that's 17. And if you look very closely at the newspapers, when they reveal, you know, these task forces of who they've arrested, you'll see that maybe there's not even a minor child involved in that, in that sweep. So um, there's a lot of fraud and uh, a lot of misinformation um, that is generating government funds and political careers for people who have not a clue about what goes on and how this impacts the child who actually suffers from this crime. So they do a lot of grandstanding and a lot of work to try and do these busts necessarily or claim they're doing these busts, but when it comes down to actually like making sure that the children are taken care of after the fact um, and following through with their progress, they're kind of lacking. Is that what you're saying? They do nothing. They do absolutely nothing. And, and many times the federal government doesn't do investigations at all. They go around every few months and they take the numbers of the local cops from a certain regional area and they throw that together and they send out a press release and they take credit for their arrest. So um, it, it, it's, it's, it's really awful when you look at the amount of money that's been spent that could have been spent on the care and supervision of kids. And it's not. And you can't really blame them because, you know, they're in it for survival. So um, people who are working on the Internet, and whether they're call girls, sex workers, children, or whatever, will tell you, you, that, you know, there's so much competition on the Internet. If you run an ad, you will um, sit for eight hours to get a call. And a lot of calls you get are dirty talking and people never show up. Um, but so you have to work somewhere else. So you may have ads running, but you also may be working the truck stop. Or you also may be working the motel or working for a madam in another situation. So many of the ads you see where it's, you know, a 14-year-old girl wants to have sex, a mother wants to sell their baby, those are cops running ads to get people to respond to them mm. so they can do the arrest. Or media. Okay, interesting. <laughs> because no one really in that business would run that kind of ad. Why, yeah. why would you? You're asking for trouble. So then what would be the solution <clears throat> then to do... Um, I mean, would it just be trying to help more organizations like you? Or well, I think be, helping them... organizations and doing advocacy, yeah. going in and looking at children's homes and going, if I was a 14-year-old prostitute and I was brought here, I'm not staying here. You need to expose that. There needs to be money put into all of the group homes that take care of our children who are living in out-of-home care. Um, lots of money, you know. Um, these kids are living in... in Practically orphanages and in a, a, in a poverty style of living, you know, ketchup is sometimes counted as their vegetable. It's the conditions that our children who are living in in America is an embarrassment. So I saw you had a little school down there. Mm -hmm. um, have you had many girls go on to then try and do junior college or? We place five kids a year in college. Wow. No, every year. And our, one of our boys just received an honorable mention in the Los Angeles County Science Fair in the Engineering Applications Division. No, we, we were very educationally based. Wow, that's pretty we put cool. over 100 kids. And as long as you've, if you've come through Children of the Night, as long as you're in school and you've got passing grades, you've got a transcript, um, 
will buy your books and school supplies for as long as you're in school. The only real way out of this lifestyle is through education and through opening doors to give yourself access to another way of life. Counseling, it's necessary, um, but you can do all the counseling you want in the world. You still need a place to live and a job. So the real way to rescue these kids is just to help these organizations that can offer them a safe place to be at, to live. Well, help the organizations have fresh yeah. beds, yeah. fresh linen. Make sure that they have good groceries. Make sure that they have enough supervision. Um, help them with volunteer programs. Help them raise money so they can hire more people. See that the kids have activities. Um, our kids are taken out every Friday to, you know, beaches and museums and and uh, entertainment parks and, and all kinds of things. They go snowboarding twice a year. Um, they go uh, snorkeling and kayaking in Catalina Island. The paramedics help us with that. But all of that takes an effort and it takes, and it takes resources. And a lot of times it's volunteer resources as well as money. So where can our viewers go and see to check out your website and how can they help? Well, they can go to our website, which is childrenofthenight.org, and they can donate or they can apply to be a volunteer there. You think our information's hardcore? You think our focus is brutal? Try our nutraceuticals. Try our supplements. We've taken Brain Force and made it Brain Force Plus. Now a 20% more in the bottle and an even more hardcore formula. You owe it to yourself to get these products. They really have worked for myself, my family. They have five-star reviews by the thousands. Secure your Brain Force Plus today at InfoWarsLife.com. Now 20% stronger. Again, InfoWarsLife.com.